All right, it's time to answer an age old question about these newer MacBook Pros. Since purchasing an Apple laptop is much more complicated than it used to be, not only do we have to know about specs, performance, but now the option to get the touch bar with ID or not. And from your standard 13 inch MacBook Pro, there's a huge $500 difference. So is getting that $500 option really necessary? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys my experience if I regret on picking up the touch bar or not. Now, since the 13 inch MacBook Pro is the only one that gives us the option to select the touch bar, that is gonna be the only laptop we'll be fo mainly focusing on in this video. The Mac you see in front of us is my late fall 2016 MacBook Pro 13 inch. And it's the touch bar model, which means all touch bar model come standard with four USB type C ports, two on each side. Then on the non touch bar version, they only come equipped with two USB type C ports. But this isn't always a bad thing since you'll be needing to use a dongle anyways. And one of this will most likely come with all the ports you'll be needing on one side. The touch bar models will also have a bump in performance but we'll cover more about that in a little bit. So from using this Mac for almost a year and a half now, here's what I think about the touch bar. I like having the ability to simply unlock my Mac with just my print without needing to type in my passcode. Then being at risk of having somebody looking down my shoulder trying to guess my password. And then to me, this feels more secure than the Apple Watch feature to unlock your Mac if you're nearby. Because even though you get the notification that your laptop has been unlocked, that laptop could be in a room with a roommate or a sibling going through your stuff and if the door is locked well there's no option to lock the laptop off the watch then the apple pay integration is an amazing experience when shopping online but unfortunately only works on the apple store other online retailers haven't adapted this yet and it's been over a year now and replying to messages using imessage or emails you'll have easy access to emojis then similar to your phone, it also displays suggestions for future words or corrections on typos you might have missed. Then on certain web browsers like Google Chrome or Safari, you'll see shortcuts to different options, thumbnails on Safari on previous websites you went to. Now all that may sound nice, but how is this going to transform the way I work? Especially since all that I previously talked about can still be complete by just doing a couple clicks on the mouse. Well, that's the thing, if all you need your laptop to do is simple tasks like that, then opting for the touch bar isn't always necessary. The users that I feel that could really benefit of having the touch bar are the ones that rely on editing programs like Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro, just to name a few. Those programs that I mentioned require a lot of key command memorizing, and those supportive programs really do utilize the touch bar. All the most commonly used shortcuts will be automatically displayed on the touch bar and are a simple tap away. This helps me multiple times when I'm ever doing something and I forgot a certain command instead of looking it up, it's already right there available, saving me time, making my workflow much more efficient. But don't be fooled, the touch bar isn't perfect. There has been time when I'm in the middle of typing up a document and my finger would accidentally tap the escape key kicking me out of a document I was typing up and making me lose my train of thought. So to the most part, all the touch bar really is is just an additional tool to have access to quicker shortcuts. The touch bar is also fully customizable except for the escape key since you can't move it, it's always going to be on the top left hand corner which is fine, which is just like any ordinary traditional keyboard. And you still have controls to the original function keys like you would on a regular laptop just by simply holding down the FN key. So with all that being said, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I see it more like a luxury if you get the touch bar option. Sure, the 13 inch MacBook does get a small bump in performance, but it still uses the same KB Lake 7th gen dual core i5 processor. It's just bumped at a higher clock speed and the touch bar version also gives you a small bump in graphics. It uses Iris. 650 then the non touch bar version uses a 640 and geekbench have shown there really isn't that much of a significant bump in performance they're only apart by a couple of hundreds then a couple of thousands and so just to clarify a few things the touch bar 13 inch macbook pro is perfect for those who need a small but very portable laptop for content creating the touch bar can be a very useful tool to have for applications that require a ton of key command memorization since most of the commonly used commands are always going to be a simple tap away and can make 
productivity, very efficient. The non-touchscreen version MacBook Pro are perfect for those who just need a laptop for just daily usage, either for college students or just simple document tasks. But those are just my opinions. I can't really speak the same about everybody needs, but I hope I could summarize this in this video as much as possible. But do I personally regret on picking up the touch bar version? No, I actually do feel I really do utilize the touch bar a lot and it really does help me in making my productivity work a lot more efficient. But if you're still iffy, if you should get the touch bar version, there's applications like Touche that allows you to test out the touch bar and seeing what kind of application that you use on a daily basis can really utilize that touch bar. I have a link to that application in the video description down below. Well, that's gonna be the end of this video. If you found this video very informative and useful, show your gratitude by smashing that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. And don't hesitate on sharing this video to somebody who's debating between the non-touch bar or touch bar version. Hopefully this video could help them out. But if you guys wanna check out a review I made between the 15 inch and 13 inch Mac, be sure to check out this video right here. But as always, hope to see you guys on the next video. Peace.